Okay, so today I'm preparing this LG 32LC56 32 inch LCD TV and this is not a repair tutorial, this is just a repair log because I don't even know if I'm going to be able to fix this one um, but it's quite a bit of, quite a difficult one actually like most LG TVs that I get they always seem to have stupid intermittent faults like this anyway so you'll notice that on the power supplies I've done a bit of work and I've actually had to do a bodge job <laughs> uh, that cap I had to relocate because the one I brought is too tall <laughs> uh, but basically initially this wouldn't turn on and that was because there was several failed Samwa WB capacitors on the power supply secondary so I've had to replace those using Panasonic FC for the 2216 or 10 volts and for the 1000 microfarad or 1535 volt I'm going to use this Nichicon uh, P I think it's a PW uh, basically what happened uh, I couldn't source um, a cap that was the correct height for this so I had to buy this one which is smaller physical diameter but it's a lot taller so I had to come up with a way of mounting it and as you can see I had mounted it there I couldn't mount it under the board either it's a bodge job I know but power supply is now up and working fully anyway so the fault that I'm experiencing with this is that basically after the TV's on for about five or ten minutes after it heats up the picture goes all messed up and fuzzy and what eventually happens is uh, the back the uh, actual T-Con turns off and there's no longer any image being produced but the backlights and the sound still work now these TVs, uh, these LGs, I've seen the panel fail on a couple of these, however I don't think it's a panel fault by the way it's an LG panel uh, because when the uh, image was flickering uh, on the LCD the backlight was also flickering now these TVs do have a, I think it's like a smart backlight dimming function which basically uh, the backlight control is tied up with a T-Con uh, so say if this is to display a pure black screen the T-Con will tell the backlight to dim to its minimal uh, brightness say if it was a full white screen the T-Con would ramp the backlight up to the, its maximum brightness so. uh, I think it's called dynamic backlighting or something I can't really be bothered to explain that feature but yeah, it, it. to be honest, it's just a crappy feature because it just looks rubbish because you can actually see the backlight strobing and ramping up in brightness. It's just, it just looks crap, in my opinion. Anyway, uh, the reason why I don't think it's an LCD fault is because when uh, the LCD glass was flickering, the backlight was as well. Until I turned the backlight dimming feature off and the LCD and the LCD was doing it but the backlight wasn't flickering so that basically tells me that the panel the LCD glass is probably okay uh, because if the LCD glass was at fault the T-Con I am sure is not that sensitive and can't pick up a failing tab on driver uh, like it was and tell the backlight to dim uh, so I'm pretty certain that it's either a T-Con or a mainboard fault. Now I've checked the power supply voltages and they're all fine. Um, now I had to... I took this up to my uncle's and got it on as a solar scope and I was able to find that the LVDS uh, signal was actually messing up. Uh, like it was going on and off and messing up and when the picture went out the LVDS signal disappeared and that tells me that this main board is at fault basically so I'm going to screw this back into the chassis and I'm going to show you the failure and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this hairdryer I'm going to heat the main board and you can see the issue 
uh, and it only happens after the TV heats up. So again, intermittent failure, horrible to trace down, but if you do put some time into it, you will find out what's causing it. Too bad I don't have a flip, I can't bring this, the oscilloscope back here, because I would be able to, uh, you know, pinpoint what part it is. The minute it's looking like some of these caps, or that little regulator or something, so, you shall see. And just to prove I don't think it's the LCD glass, um, I'm going to heat the LCD and basically where the tab on drivers. The vertical uh, tab on drivers are at the top of the screen and the horizontal ones are at the side here. So I'm going to heat there and turn it on, you'll see it worked fine. And then I'm going to heat the main board and you'll see that it fails. Uh, let me do that with you. Okay, so that's pretty warm so, from my power cable. There we go. All right. Oh, it's actually come on by itself. Okay. So, as you can see, the image is nice. I'm gonna sort of bow the panel and whatnot. You can see. No distortions whatsoever. Uh, I wonder how I can do this. All right, no distortions whatsoever. I can actually flex the panel with just one hand because this this frame is just so cheap. You see, nothing happens, and the image is perfect. So I'm going to heat this mainboard now. And it might take a few more minutes of the mainboard being on for the uh, issue to occur. See, it's perfect. Uh, I'll just give this a blast of heat again. Let's just see. Oh, there it was. It's starting to happen. Alright, it was only very brief just then. Oh, here we go. Alright, let's continue heating. There we go. It only starts off minor, but as the TV eventually gets, you know, the longer you have it on, the more it starts to fail. Um, you see, it's not like the glitch that happens on the screen is not like persistent. So it's not like a vertical uh, failure. It's horizontal and it's all over the place. and. Screen just failed. So, um, if I 
turn it off for a little bit, let it cool down. It'll come on fine. I was doing a bit of research on bad caps net, and I typed in the main board number, uh, basically, which is blah blah blah. Oh, it's a EAX three five two three one four zero three, and then open bracket zero close bracket, and. Uh, there's a similar failures that people are reporting with this main board because this main board is used in a 42 inch, a 26 inch and I think a 37 inch chassis. Yeah it is, it's used in a 37LC55 or something chassis. And uh, again similar failure. Um, powers up fine, work for 10 minutes and the picture will go but sound remains. Backlight will also stay on. And there's a couple more. Let's just uh, go on to the next page. One. And there's somebody else posts, I think, with a similar issue. And he's saying how fun intermittent faults are. They are not very fun. <laughs> And then, here we go, uh, somebody pointed out that this IC here, uh, I think it's IC902, uh, after we heated that area the picture would go off and then reappear. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this cool down and I'm going to check the voltage from that regulator which I think is 3.3 volts or something and then I'm going to heat it so that the glitch appears and then I'm going to check the voltage again and he was checking all the capacitors uh, and the inputs and the output voltage of the caps and I think somebody else joins in, yeah this guy joins in and then somebody called Scoops uh, puts up an interesting theory. What he ended up doing was replacing that cap there, that cap, and I think all of these caps in this little area here. And he had the uh, do, do, do. no picture but backlight on failure. And it seems to be a common issue with this main board, and luckily I don't think it's a panel failure. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is check that regulator, and if it's fine, what I might end up doing is just replacing a whole bunch of caps that he's listed, just to try it. And uh, I haven't got my uncle's ESR meter, and I'm bored, so I'm going to see if I can finish this off today. Hopefully I can, but I'm going to get my meter out and see what happens. Okay, so with the TV working, here's the measurements of this regulator. There's one volt on the first pin. Second pin, 1.66. Third pin, nothing. Fourth pin, 3.25. And fifth pin, 3.2. So on the tab at the top, there's nothing. So the first pin being that one, and the fifth one being that one. So I think the image is working. No. <laughs> Blooper. Unless that's now not giving anything. It won't be a blooper. So it's not a blooper. Oh fuck! It is a blooper. Less. I guess I'm using my foot. No. <sighs> Fucking to you. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm going to try replacing a few of these caps. Unfortunately, I don't have an ESR meter, so which is making my life hell because I can't test these caps. But um, I'm going to try replacing these two. Basically, any cap that has a blue marker on the top. 
and I'll see what happens, so I'll get back to you. To take off an SMD cap, it's fairly easy. Just need some needle nose pliers. I'll do one of the small ones, so find out where its legs are, and you want to rock it the opposite way. I'll do this one actually. What you do is you just grab the cap, push down on the board, and just start wiggling it like that. This does destroy the cap in the removal process, by the way, so I'm going to start wiggling it. And there you go. The pads remain intact. And all you do is get your solder iron. And whoops. It's really just going to wipe off the legs of the old calf. Get the new one, bend them into position, and solder it. We'll get back to you when this is done. Is that glue or is that leaking electrolyte? <laughs> Doesn't look too happy. Hmm. Yeah. And that's how I soldered the new one, just bent the legs out and then tacked it on. So, I'm gonna get this recapped. Okay, so I've replaced a few caps. I've replaced that one, that one, those two, that one. I've just freshened up the solder joint on that little IC. And as you can see, TV's on. And there's one difference I noticed. And I actually did a blooper when I was testing this IC. Uh, I'll have to put half of it in the video, but the last pin here was only 0.89 volts before I replaced the caps. Now it's 1.16. And the input. 3.24 volts and now originally that was only 3.2 so the inputs higher and again that pin is higher and the output is now higher 1.7 on the pin that only measured like 0.8 and 1.16 on the pin that only measured like I think 0.8 again that's after replacing these two caps now these do feed the 3.3 volts that goes to this regulator and I haven't looked at a schematic so I don't know what that regulator is for but it's now outputting uh, more than what it was before I replaced the caps so test is now get the hand dryer Still on. Give it a bit more heat. Still on. And that is actually extremely warm now, so. Menu up. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> now, I don't know if this is something genuine, but the image quality actually looks a lot more clearer. <laughs> like, seriously. I haven't seen a single glitch yet either. I was looking up for this, but the real test is after we leave it on for a few hours. <laughs> Just going to add a bit more heat. It's 
Still on. Oh wait. Uh, I saw it happen. I did. Oh, then again. Uh, so it looks like there's more work to be done. Hmm. Measure the regulator again. So with it working, and that was from cold, it was uh, still the same input. Output's pretty much still the same. Yeah. I did see one glitch, which seems to be fine now. No, right, I'm going to leave this running, and we'll see what happens. So I'll get back to you. Okay, so I'm just tuning in the TV at the minute, and uh, there's background static that you know gets all kind of weird. Uh, it looks like distorting on it, but the good news is that distorting is not happening on the menu, and the image is pretty much rock stable. You see, look. Whereas before, when that distorting happened in the static in the background, it was causing the menu and going pink and stuff. You know. That's no longer happening. And should actually get a digital channel if we cancel now. I think we will. Oh. I'm gonna have to retune it. <laughs> Start. Alright, let's let this tune in and uh, we'll see what happens. So far so good. Alright, so I'm just about to seal up the television. It is officially all repaired. And it was just a few little capacitors. Which is uh, crazy. I don't think it was a loose solder joint. But... Uh, power supply's got good caps on the output now. Yeah, there's a bit of a bodge job there. But, you know, what can I do about that? Uh, it will work fine. Anyway, so my initial on the supply and on the main board, and my initial up there. I've also vacuumed out the TV. I'm gonna reassemble it, and hopefully, it should be case closed. I mean, I've been testing it for about three hours now, and it's not messed up once, so feeling pretty confident. Okay, so the TV is officially fixed. I've been testing it for about four hours. And I'm pretty confident that it's all working properly. So, was just a simple case of failed capacitors. Which uh, just goes to show though what bad capacitors can actually do. Because the TV was acting really goofy and, you know, messing up. And it's quite a difficult one to diagnose as well because most people who watch this or, you know, know about failing capacitors You'll know that when a capacitor fails, uh, it's a lot harder to get a device to start from cold. But after a device heats up with failed capacitors and the caps heat up, the device will work. Uh, because the ESR goes down when the cap is warm. Now what I think was happening was, was at cold, the capacitors, the ESR was at one stage and was causing a certain amount of ripple. And then when it heated up and the ESR was going lower, I think that it was causing the regulator to mess up because of, I'm guessing that the current was changing and whatnot. <coughs> but uh, yeah, simple few caps replaced and the TV's working. I have a suspicion that those caps weren't a bad series and failed because of the power supply because the caps on the power supply originally were at fault and I think that the ripple current off them because when caps fail they don't filter out the ripple current on a voltage rail I think that the ripple current coming off the failed caps on the power supply uh, eventually just overloaded the ones on the uh, main board because they end up taking all the load and just caused them to fail and uh, the circuit that they were feeding, the ones that I replaced, is pretty sensitive, really. Um, 
I mean, yeah, the voltage uh, difference on that regulator was only about 0.4 volts. Um, but it was enough to cause the TV to go messed up and goofy. I mean, whenever you get a device that has bad capacitors, you should never ignore the uh, ignore the bad caps, basically, because what they'll end up doing is they'll stress something else out with the ripple current and it'll cause that to fail, basically. And it doesn't help that the owner, uh, when they got this, when the TV started playing off, they messaged me a few months before. You know, saying the TV was taking a long, you know, longer to turn on and etc. You know, and when it ev eventually failed to turn on, uh, and I replaced the caps on the power supply, I noticed that the screen started to mess up. So, whenever your device shows signs of having a breakdown in with the electronics, always get it checked out because you never know something else could fail. And cost you a lot more because I'd say other people or other technicians, uh, not naming anybody, uh, probably would have just said a failed screen or a failed main board on this one. Um, so, yeah. And all thanks to badcaps.net, you know, I was able to fix this because I mean, I was making progress with the oscilloscope, um, but. I would have never suspected the capacitors to have been failed uh, because you know when they fail normally as I said it's harder to get a device to start rather than them failing when they heat up basically. It is common for reg voltage regulators to fail in that manner so when the set is cold the voltage reg will work and then when it heats up it breaks down but um, capacitors it's, it's less common. Uh, basically, but this one's uh, sorted. Turn it back on for you. And I uh, hope this uh, little repair log helps anyone out there that has one of these three or three two LC five six TVs that uses that main board. You know. So, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.